Women of Fellowship. My name is Rachel McManical, and I'm going to be sharing some of my thoughts um, on the topic of when things feel out of control. Um, And maybe that's you in 2020. It's been quite the year. Um, And God didn't consult me about his plans for 2020 either. Um, In fact, my husband Joel and I were supposed to be overseas in our first year of language learning at this time. And here we are, we're waiting. a lot of borders are closed right now, um, so we are just waiting to get the green light on um, when we can travel and begin our language learning and our transition over there. So we are in limbo. So when Susan Avery sent me the list of topics and I saw um, when things feel out of control, I said, I will take that one. That is definitely the classroom that God has me in right now. Um, and he's teaching me a lot through it. Um, the other classroom that he has me in is that of parenting. Um, so you other mamas out there can relate with me on some of the things that I will share. Um, and if you're not in that season of life right now, um, God is very creative and he has other tools, um, that he's using in your life, um, for this process of sanctification that we are all in together. Um, but I do love the way that God uses parenting to teach, Um, my heart. And sometimes I will be mid-sentence correcting my child or teaching my child about something and I'll be like, oh, I could use that same truth that I am trying to share with him or her. Um, So I'm going to use my daughter Makai as an example. She is six years old and she thinks that she ought to run the house, that she knows it all. She's got it under control and um, she should be in charge. So we have to have a lot of conversations about okay, um, who's really in charge here and um, what's going on in your heart. And um, so it usually goes something like this. She'll um, be in trouble for something. And I'll say, Micaiah, who made you? She'll say, God, because she knows she gets, she knows the the routine by now. Um, And I'll say, okay, and who loves you more than anyone else ever could? Well, God does. Yeah. Okay. And so um, what does God say that you should do? obey mommy and daddy. Yeah. And because God loves you and because he made you, he, he's the best one to know what is best for you, honey. Um, and you can trust him in that. And it's right then and there that I'm like, "Hmm, okay, I need to be applying these very same truths to my heart. Um, because yes, she definitely needs them, but I need them too. And, and we all do, we all do need to be grounding ourselves in these truths that, God is in control. We are not. Um, But that's okay because he loves us and he he has good for us and he is good. That is, that is who he is. Um, And as we look at scripture, we see that the very first sin recorded in the Bible in Genesis three, um, Satan calls into question these very things. He calls into question God's authority and his goodness and his love Um, And as we look at the creation account, we can see that God fully demonstrated to Adam and Eve his love and his goodness and his authority. Um, Just look at the lavishness of creation. He had given Adam and Eve everything they needed for survival, but it wasn't just this bare bones, you know, tough it out kind of thing. He was lavish in his provision for them. Um, Just look at... um, the varieties of apples, for example, we're in fall now. There's lots of apples on the trees. There are over 7,000 varieties of apples. <laughs> um, I mean, it's, it's crazy the abundance that God gave. He could have sustained Adam and Eve on one type of food, let alone um, 7,000 types of apples. I mean, come on. Um, But that's just who God is. He's so generous and lavish in his provision. And he gave Adam and Eve abundance in the garden. And um, Revelation 4.11 says that um, he created everything for his pleasure. So he took pleasure in providing lavishly for Adam and Eve. So that is the setting that um, this first sin takes place in and Satan comes along and he says, hmm, does God really have your best in mind? Is he really good? I mean, it's kind of ridiculous, but we do um, the very same thing. Um, so he calls that into question. And Adam and Eve, um, they, had, they enjoyed a perfect relationship with God. Um, 
that there was this lavish provision, but there was also the fellowship that they shared with him in perfection. And um, an aspect of that fellowship was dependence. He had provided all this for them in the garden. Um, and it was, um, it was so that they could be, they could enjoy those things, but it was independence upon him. So I think we get confused sometimes. I think we think that dependence is a result of the fall and part of the fallen world. And it's not, it was something that God um, made a part of their relationship um, in this perfect world that they enjoyed in Eden together. So our relationship with God, it is meant to be one of dependence. We were never meant to be in control. We were never meant to be independent from God. Um, and so as we look at the creation story, we see that very clearly. And as um, we know, the rest of the story goes, Eve does question God's goodness and she begins to believe that he's withholding from her. And so she takes of the apple so that she can become wise. The apple, uh, we don't know what fruit it is. Um, yeah, but she takes of the fruit um, and she eats um, and as her daughters, we are tempted to do the very same thing. Um, so many of the sins that we struggle with day to day, it boils down to not believing God is in control. Um, he doesn't have authority um, or he's not good and he doesn't love me. Um, and as women, especially, that's where a lot of our, our struggle lies is just trusting that. And so we do the very same thing that Eve did. We grasp for control in our own lives and we um, seek to be independent from God. And um, that just doesn't leave us in a very, very good place. But thankfully, God does not leave us there. Now, last year in Women of the Word, um, Elaine Brashear was teaching through the book of Mark. But something that stood out to me as we studied through the book of Mark was um, the, the dependence of Christ upon the Father. I mean, here's Jesus. He is God Almighty. And yet everything that he did as recorded in scripture was in dependence upon the Holy Spirit's leading and in obedience to the Father. He didn't act in his own power or on his own agenda, but he obeyed God perfectly um, through the leading and the guidance of the Holy Spirit. And he did that as our example. And it was through that obedience and through that dependence that he went to the cross and he paid um, the price for our sins, for our fighting for independence, for our rebellion, against, our rebellion against God and for our pride. He paid for that on the cross. Um, but that's not the only reason he did it. He paid for those things. He bought our forgiveness. He reconciled us to the Father. Um, but he also did it so that he could live in us. Um, in Galatians 2.20, it says, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the perfect dependence that Christ lived out um, through his earthly life, it can be ours because he is the one that is living in us if we have believed in him. Um, and I love James uh, chapter 4, verse 13 through 15. It reminds us, um, it says, Come now, you who say, Today or tomorrow we will go into such and such a town and spend a year there and trade and make a profit. Yet you do not know what tomorrow will bring. What is your life? For you are a mist that appears for a little time and then vanishes. Instead, you ought to say, If the Lord wills, we will live and do this or that. So we are not in control. God is. And none of this has caught him by surprise. He knew in 2019 that all this craziness was coming. And as Joel and I were making our plans for ministry partnership development, he knew that it was going to be more than a year. Um, we had no idea, but he knew. But if you're like me, that's not the hard part to swallow. Um, I can give mental assent to God's sovereignty pretty easily. Um, I know that he's in control and that's very comforting most of the time. Something, sometimes um, it's something I struggle with because I'm not the one in control. But usually for me, it's believing that God is good and that he loves me um, in the midst of those things because I want to believe my feelings rather than what is true. And so when I'm in circumstances that feel overwhelming um, and I would rather be in control. I sometimes have a hard time believing that God loves me in those things and that his character is loving when I'm in those types of situations. 
Um, but something God has really used to teach my heart is by bringing me through a season where I felt completely out of control. Um, so I say that we graduated from training in 2018. Well, we started that training um, back in 2016 in the fall, and we moved to Missouri in August, and Makaya was almost two, her birthday's in September, um, and Malachi was three months old. So we had our handful, hands full with little ones, and we had just sold our house, we had sold our, all our possessions, and um, we moved our little family over to Missouri um, to be both Joel and I were going to be full-time students um, so that we could pursue ministry overseas. And so we were excited about that. Um, but it ended up being way harder than either one of us had anticipated. Um, and part of what made that season really hard was the fact that Malachi was not a good sleeper um, for the first year of his life. Like he just, didn't like to sleep at night. That wasn't necessary for him or something. Um, so that was a piece that was really, really difficult because we were uh, sleep deprived pretty much that whole year. And then for me, the postpartum hormones probably didn't help anything either. Um, but I just remember going into it being like, oh, I survived nursing school. Like this can't academically be that difficult. But then I would try to sit down and write a paper with my two-year-old and my baby running around and I try to squeeze it in during nap time, but then they would nap at the same time. And um, it was hard. It was really hard and um, it wasn't anything I anticipated and it just felt really overwhelming. Um, I felt like a failure. Um, I began to resent my babies, my kids, because um, I had this expectation of myself academically that I should be this star student and um, I wasn't able to do that well. Um, and then I didn't feel like I was being a good mom either um, because I was resenting my kids. So I was like, I couldn't be a good student. So I was resenting my kids. And then I felt like a failure as a mom because I was resenting my kids. So it was like resentment, guilt. Um, failure. Um, emotionally, I didn't have the capacity to invest in my marriage. I didn't have the capacity to um, invest in new friendships. Um, and so it was just a really hard time for me. And like I said, I felt like a failure in all aspects. I wasn't able to wake up early in the morning to have my quiet time because I would wake up at 5 a.m. and Malachi would be awake and ready to start the day with me. Um, and so I felt like I was failing as a wife, as a mom, as a student, as a Christian. I just, um, and that was new for me. Um, I tend to be kind of an achiever. And so even though um, I understand the message of grace, a lot of times I live in a way that um, I'm trying to achieve. Um, and it, it kind of worked for me up until that point. And God allowed me to just run into a wall, a brick wall, and to feel like a failure in order to teach me some of these things. And that was the place that God met me. Um, I come to the end of myself. I felt like a failure and I did not like my circumstances. They did not feel very loving. Um, and yet God met me there. Um, so as I began to wrestle, I dug into his word and I um, started journaling some of these things and um, he spoke truth into my heart. Um, he brought passages like um, Matthew 1130 um, to mind that um, his yoke is easy and his burden is light. And I was like, really, God, this doesn't feel light. Um, and then I read the passage, Isaiah 40, 11. He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. And that was me. I saw myself in that passage and I was like, wow, does he really take extra care of a mama with young? Um, Cause that's me. And that, that feels heavy right now. Um, and then passages in Romans eight, where there's no condemnation for those in Christ Jesus. I felt like a failure. And yet that's not how God saw me. Um, he loved me and he accepted me and extended me grace in that situation where I felt like such a failure. Um, he said, I love you. And that you're enough because of what Christ has done, because of who you are in Christ. That is how I see you is, is clothed in his righteousness. And it's not something that you are achieving for yourself. It is something that I've freely given you through my grace and through Christ's work on the cross. And that was just such a beautiful 
thing, something that I had understood intellectually for so long became my reality because I was brought to that really difficult place. Um, and I just, I began to believe that God loved me um, despite not being everything I wanted to be. I wanted to be a good mom for my kids. I wanted to be a good wife to my husband. I wanted to be a good missionary and a good student. Um, and yet I was trying to do all those things in my own strength and I just couldn't. And that was God's mercy and not allowing me to. Um, but as I began to believe that he loved me and that the circumstances he brought me through were because of his love for me, um, I began to experience joy and peace in those places. Um, our circumstances didn't change. We still weren't sleeping much. Um, the papers were still due. We still had obligations to fulfill. But um, I began to believe that those things were given by a loving hand of God, of a God who saw me in my situation and who loved me. Um, and that just that changed everything. I began to um, be able to serve. I began to be able to have people over to my home without having it to be having it to be immaculate. Um, and I could visit with people while still being interrupted by my kids and learned not to resent them in those in those times, but just to to take hold of the time that I had and instead of being um, upset that I didn't get my eight hours of sleep or I didn't have my me time, my self-care time, um, I began to trust God that he would give me the time that I needed, um, whether, you know, whether that looked like I wanted it to or not, whether um, my agenda for the day got um, crossed off or not, that I could trust God's plan for me instead of having to fight for control and having to protect myself and advocate for myself because I began to believe that God loved me and I didn't have to protect myself from him or advocate for myself because he knew better than, than I did what I needed. So looking back now, I'm so thankful for that really difficult season that God brought me through because he taught me about himself and he taught me about how he saw me. And it was stuff I knew that I had been taught. Um, I grew up in a home where I was taught those things and yet it took God leading me through that season where I was completely out of control um, for me to really um, embrace those things and believe them in my heart. And I'm so glad that he did that for me. So maybe 2020 has left you feeling out of control. Um, and I just invite you to, instead of um, just kind of putting your head in the sand and waiting for this all to pass, like I hear a lot of people talking about, like, let, let's just survive until this gets over. Rather than, you know, just grinning and bearing it until it's done or um, resenting it or feeling fearful or, um, any of those human responses we have, let's take this as an invitation by God to get to know him more and to depend on him in a deeper way than we ever have before. Um, maybe out of sheer necessity, um, because we really do. I mean, we need him at all times, but it's in times like this that we really understand that we are not in control. There's so little in our lives that we actually control and that's okay. That's actually a freedom because we can trust the Lord um, because he is good and he really does love and care for us. Um, so it's just some practical ways to do that um, is just to be in his word and to be reminding ourselves of truth. Who is this God that we believe in? What is his character? What is he like? Um, fill your mind and your heart with those truths um, and that can sustain you when things are hard. The other thing um, that you can do is look back in your own life to see how God has been faithful in your life. What other hard times has he brought you through? Um, and just encourage yourself in those truths um, because God really is our anchor um, at all times, but especially in these times when, when life feels out of control, is out of control. Um, we have hope. We have an anchor for our soul because we um, trust in the one who holds this world in his hands and who knows our days and our times and who loves us. He's not just out in the back 40 doing his thing. He is intimately involved in our